everyone and welcome back to another video. Simon and Yanis are cracking on in the hallway with the stud wall and they've listened to your comments. They're making something very special in there. You'll see that in a little bit. Duncan's cracking on in the apartment and we have been sent something very exciting uh, by one of you. So thank you so much. In fact, let's go check that out right now because I can't wait. So you know how we love an old photograph of the convent that will help us decipher the history of this place. Well, one of you wonderful viewers has actually sent in some incredible aerial photographs, seven of them in fact, taken at different points in time. Let's take a look. So the first one is from 1933 and admittedly we can't see much. Obviously I'm guessing this was taken from a plane but you do get an idea of the outline of the convent itself and its garden. Next photo is in 1947 and my oh my you can see a drastic improvement. It's clear as day and finally we've got a perfectly clear photo that gives us the layout of the garden. We now know how it is, which is gonna allow us to recreate it down to the centimeter, or well, not quite, down to the meter. It's great, I mean, look, they even had maybe some vegetable patches there, I think, down at the very end of the garden. Wow, incredible. Now, something I very quickly noticed about this photo, so the next photo is 1965, and up the top here, we have the Lavoir, uh, which is uh, a public place where uh, the townsfolk would come to wash their clothes. And here in 1947, it's still there. And then 1965 comes around and it's gone. So at some point between 1947 and 65, they removed that old public Lavoir for good. It eventually became uh, public toilets. That's what they built there. And also in 1947 on the roof, we can clearly see the dormer uh, where the hoist was so that they could hoist up supplies straight into the attic space because that's what they used to do. You probably saw that in a recent video as well. And uh, going back to 1965, it's completely missing, it's gone. So at some point between 47 and 65, that was also removed from the convent. Very interesting, very interesting indeed. So up until probably the 50s, maybe even as late as the 60s, they were still hoisting up supplies. Very, very interesting. And you can see in 65 how the trees are maturing. Let's go on to the next image. 1969 is looking quite different from 65. Um, there's less details in this photo, admittedly, but the patterns have changed slightly on the, um, the grass patches within the courtyard. And moving on to 1979, that's when I notice the lift shaft, is it back? In that one, no. So in 69, there's no lift shaft. In 79, there's a lift shaft. So between 69, 1969, sorry, and 1979, that's when the lift was installed. So this gives us 
uh, an indication of modifications that were made. It gives us a bit of a timeline so that we know when certain changes happened within the convent <laughs> and outside the convent, of course, as well, because you can see how the car park out the front is developing and you can see how the trees are maturing and there's no um, retirement home here yet, uh, which is obviously there now. 1980, still no retirement home. Trees are maturing beautifully. No more patterns on the grass in the courtyard. Very interesting. And it gives us the perfect outline, the perfect shape. We could get the measurements just so precise now, thanks to this. And uh, here is the most recent one in 2006, where we see a new structures built here. This is the canteen uh, for the retirement home, which is also now built here. And then there's a car park here where it's all developed basically um, in 2006. And uh, not much has changed in 2006 because obviously the nuns, they sold the place. I believe it was around the end of 2010. And then after that, it essentially lay abandoned. Very interesting. Thank you so much to the viewer who sent these in. I don't know where you got them from, but we are ecstatic to have received them. And uh, her name is Mary. So Mary, these are gonna be known. Uh, well, when we make the actual map of the garden and everything, we're gonna call it Mary's Maps in honor of your hard work and incredible detective skills. Okay, moving on. So just outside the convent gates are a couple of things I want to show you. Firstly, the public toilets that's boarded up, and that's actually where the lavoir used to be. So people used to come there, wash their clothes. I guess there was some kind of natural spring or fresh water supply, no idea, but very interesting nonetheless. Now there is another thing, a little plaque I want to show you, in fact. Let's go and check it out. Where is it, mate? It's, it's that way. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Beautiful chapel doors behind me there. And here we are at the plaque. So this plaque has English and French. Uh, there's a small English translation, whereas there's a lot more French information. So it reads, though a mortuary can still be found next to the road alongside the buildings to the left. Okay, but in French it says, La glacière existe encore à gauche du chemin qui borde la communauté côté est. Elle date de 1863. So uh, the French translation actually gives us more information. It tells us that it dates from 1863. And the English one says that it's a mortuary, apparently. Whereas a glacier in French is not a mortuary. I believe it's for storing food or drinks to keep it cold, partially underground. So let's go check that out, shall we? So this is the eastern side of the convent now, down the slip road. And I do believe the glacier slash mortuary, if that's what it is, is just behind this gate here, which we can't see, unfortunately. However, come up with an idea. There's windows. So let's go up, have a look through the windows, and we'll see over the gate, and we'll see that mortuary. Let's go, come with me. Another fun fact, used to be gates here, look. You can see. Yeah, beautiful. There you go. Nice little piece of history. Unfortunately, they are long gone. I'm not actually quite sure where that window is, where we'll get the best vantage point from. So I'm gonna start with the furthest point of the convent and that is Mother Superior's room. What happened in here? Maybe there's some evidence. So 
So I'm currently in Mother Superior's bedroom and this is quite an unusual part of the convent because it's quite a large room and it's been separated into three smaller rooms. And the ceiling has been dropped quite significantly and I wanna see what's above it, what original features we can discover today. Um, the only problem is it's incredibly hot, but I've got this thing on my neck and we'll talk about it a little bit later. make the first incision. Interesting. Interesting indeed. Okay, let me grab the light and have a look. There. Well, it's amazing up here, but before I show you, I want to talk about the thing I'm wearing on my neck. This is called the Qualify 2S, and it's an air conditioning system for your neck. It has semiconductor technology on the back. It has two brushless motors and multiple air outlets. It has up to 18 hours battery life, and it's amazing. It's keeping me cool at the moment on a very hot day today like this. So I'll definitely be wearing it for the future. Anyway, let's see what's up here. Wow, this is amazing. There's so much more height up here. Let me go a little bit higher, squeeze in. Wow. So you can see everyone, the original beam on the left, you can see above a doorway there, which also has doors up here. And then you can see the beams, which are in actually really good condition. Again, they're lime washed. These two sections here are above the windows. So you can see the windows go a lot higher. And this is the beam. This is the main beam. It's got a little bit of a sag on it, but not as bad as the kitchen. Oh, I turned the light off by accident. There we go. So yeah, you can see the original beam. And what I can see as well, it's got bolts going through it. So yeah, that's really interesting. It's nice to see, again, an original feature like this ceiling. Completely hidden, but in good condition. So we can expose this at some point. Simon! It looks a bit hot out here, so I thought you could put one of these on. I'm okay. currently wearing one. Yeah, what is it? Well, it cools, cools you down. It's called the Qualify 2S. Okay. So put it around your neck. All right, okay. And then we'll turn it on. Okay. Just like that, yeah? Just like that, yeah. Okay. Right, so it heats as well as cools. So what does it do, blow cold air out? So it's got a pad at the back, which has got semiconductor technology, which cools your neck as well as blowing yeah, cold air it. in your face. Yeah, I can see yeah. it. It's clever, isn't it? It is clever, yeah. I feel like something out of Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, very cool. Anyway, I thought you'd enjoy wearing that. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, Definitely call me down on this baking hot day we've got here today. So I'll let you crack on, mate. Okay, lovely, thank you. Let's give it a go.
Ah, so that's what this is. I'm going to give this a go. Oh. oh, you know what? It's been a really hot day today. I'm not going to lie. So I'm really looking forward to trying this. Oh, yeah. That hits the spot. Genuinely, I'm quite impressed with this. And my favorite feature is the fact that it's got not one, not two, but three different levels of cooling and heating. Nice. And Coolify is giving away two of these to two of you lucky viewers. If you want to get more details, head on over to our Facebook page. Link is in the description. But if you want to buy one right now, head on over to Amazon. Link is in description and use code BILLCOOL to get 10% off. Thanks again, Coolify, for sponsoring this video. Now let's crack on. Aha, we've found it. We're in one of the apartments and we have found it. Check this out. You see that wooden door there? That is the entrance to the glacier. Dating back to 1863. And if you look closely at the horizon, there's the stone wall on the other side, the, um, the level goes up drastically, there's a hill, which means that that glacier goes into the ground, it's partially underground, and that is what would have kept uh, food cool, essentially acting as a fridge back in the day. Now, did they store bodies in there? Was it a mortuary? I think a little bit more digging needs to be done, and hopefully we can uncover some new information about the history of that glacier. But for now, let's just crack on with some work. Good afternoon everybody, welcome back to the convent. So me and Janice have been continuing with the stub work today. Uh, what we've incorporated in this little section here, if you remember, it's just a big opening. So we've put a little section in there, like a boxing section if you like, where you know we can then maybe put the, uh, we could put a fines display case in there, a piece of glass on the front of it, you know, that you can get in and out. But I spoke to Billy, he's not too sure what he wants to do. He's thinking maybe, you know, he puts a big time capsule in there and then we board over it. If, if that's the case, it's not a problem. We just need one more piece of stud work in there and then we can board over the whole lot. And, um, you know, like Billy said, you know, we could put all sorts in there, you know, from sort of this time period, if you like. So in another 200 years time, if somebody takes it all down, you know, they'll find what we was doing, you know, and we had around, you know, in, in today's date. Um, also, 
slanted this as well. So when, when you actually walk up and down the stairs, your head's sort of here, and as you go down the stairs, like I said yesterday, it's similar to your stairwell that you have in your house and when it's boarded. So it just looks nicer than if it went, you know, straight across. So that's what we've been doing uh, this morning and sort of this afternoon. Uh, what I thought we'd do also as well is we're going to have a look at the pointing that we done yesterday. Because I, when I come in this morning, it didn't look a lot different, but it's really hot today and it's dried out amazingly well. And like I said and predicted yesterday about getting a ballot getting lighter, is what it's done. So if you want to follow me into the, into the kitchen, back where we put it on yesterday, I can show you. So if you remember, we had, this was the really bright one, which we didn't want. This one was slightly, well, it was, it was a lot darker than that yesterday. So was this, and this one, if you remember, was nearly black. So if you can see, they've dried quite a lot lighter, which I thought they would when they dried out. So we're not too sure. We're gonna to have to let Billy make the decision up. Me and Alex were just discussing it. And we kind of like agreed that really somewhere between them two is the color, you know, which matches the front uh, pointing or the color of the front pointing, I should say. So, you know, it's just surprising how much it's lightened up now that it's dried out. So Billy will have the final say on that anyway, because it's, you know, it's his convent, isn't it, at the end of the day. So when he gets back off holiday, he can make that decision. And then I'll, you know, I'll point the chimney all up then for you. A bit of a shorter day today, still productive nonetheless. Nick and Rebecca are coming to spend the evening, so we've got that to look forward to. But that's going to be all for now, and I'll see you in the next video. Tomorrow.